Populist leaders Donald J. Trump, Marine Le Pen, Nigel Farage, Adolf Hitler, and even Julius Caesar have rallied the people under this banner. This isolating of the country is looked at and compared to fascism and nationalism. But is this really a fair comparison? Let's find out. So populism, what the heck does it actually mean? Is it really a cover for the evils of racism? Maybe a mask of fascism? Or even a veil to nationalism? Well, yes and no. To everything. Populism comes from the Latin word populus, which means people. So basically, we can take it to mean the concerns of the people. And that's really all it is. Good or bad? Nope. Like a tool, its uses are determined by who wields it. Now the gripe most people have with populism is that the most populous leaders, politicians in most cases, tend to use the concerns that most people have, usually immigration and jobs, and then promise to solve their problems by attacking corporations, immigrants, and even other politicians by placing sole blame on them, whether true or not is irrelevant to most people's eyes. They will believe the oversimplified problems can be solved with oversimplified solutions. In general, most people do believe this and are genuinely shocked when this oversimplified solutions don't bring the solutions they thought they would get. Did you notice I said many people a lot? That's for one reason. Not everyone believes the things I mentioned above are the one and only problems, but they still would follow a populist leader. To make this clear, let's compare populist leaders. Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. They're both populist leaders. Strange how that is since populism is generally attributed to racism, fascism, and nationalism, but Sanders isn't like that. On the other hand, Trump, by the very definition of the words, is all of those things, and while it's true that their policies are vastly different, they both have the same core message, which rallies the people against the perceived enemy, espouse reform of the status quo. Both promote themselves as a hero who will stand up and solve their problems. Who is right or wrong is debatable depending on your personal bias and who you'll listen to. We can even look to World War II with the rise of Hitler. Hitler by all rights and definitions is a highly unpopular populist leader in our age. In fact, he is so unpopular that any mention of populism brings him up mixed in with racism, fascism, and nationalism, and because of that, the word has been poisoned. So do populists need to appear for a democracy to survive and function? Populists need to appear, at least in the form they are now. Firstly, in any healthy democracy, there is a party or parties who are elected officials who voice your needs and wants in the government. Then there are the opposition members who voice the needs and wants of the people who wanted different officials in the government. That is the basic model of democracy. Over time though, the people who voted or didn't for another party which didn't end up in government eventually believes that their voices aren't being heard and then start to show signs of distrust with government, immigrants, economic management, what have you. This is something I like to call democratic fallout. At this point, populist leaders, if they haven't already been chanting to those people, will start to make their appearance, suddenly rising up as a people's champion and promising to end their suffering if they just follow and give their trust. This is the result of a democracy that has lost the trust of the people, who they are there to represent. But this doesn't inherently mean it was the government who single-handedly lost the people's trust. It could also have been outside influences like right-wing nationalists, foreign agents causing unrest, uncontrollable economic collapse thanks to another country, manufactured tragedies, etc. Needless to say, without populism, we would never truly know when the people's concerns are reaching the boiling point. Can we always assume that in every century from now, we are going to have repeats upon repeats upon repeats of populism occur? Fortunately, no. Populism from the right is becoming something of a fading mist. The rise of populism of that form occurs and succeeds in enticing people because of its simple formula. Incite the people with rousing emotional arguments and cater to those who don't have good education. This was easy to do pre-world wars because higher education, although existent, was reserved to certain social and ethnic groups. After the world wars, education began to find its footing, being released into the wild and exploding with the advent of the internet. This created more opportunities to get half-decent education, one side of the world to the other. So with the world changing towards one of social equality and higher education, we see that populism, although appealing to some at first glance, makes us turn our heads when we see the ugly side of it. After all, the only way to stop this kind of populism is through higher education. We tend to get hung up on one side of things, but although it may be a delusion on our parts for believing populism can only be from the far right, alt-right, right whatever, remember that it's never always the case and we can always stop the negative by giving the opportunity of education to those who would be most affected. 
Well, that's it. I hope you learned something useful from this video, and if you're in the mood, come back for another 5 minute info released every 2 weeks Friday. Bye for now.